Doodle bud. So my treat to myself for Fountain Pen Day has finally crossed the border and arrived after they charged me $34 in extra Canadian mafia fees. Good Lord. The uh, Opus 88 Omar. This is a, well, it's a genuine eyedropper fountain pen. This is the 1.5 millimeter made in Taiwan. This is in the amber. Let's crack this sucker open and get going. Simply remove the covering on the nice little box here. Pretty slick little packaging. You know, I haven't uh, taken the time to do an unboxing, so I thought let's do it for this one as well. Uh, I have used the pen previously to the review, but I'm going to show you the boxing. So we got the Opus little manual thing. There's stuff in there that tells you how to use the pen. You essentially put ink in it and you use it. Eyedropper. So it comes with one of those. This is a decent little made eyedropper. It uh, blows some air out of there too and ink if you fill it up. And here we got what we're looking for, the pen. So let's just get this out of here for now. A little uh, snap lid if you're interested in that stuff. A little boom, like that. A sharp looking pen it is. I like the amber color. It kind of reminds me of the uh, Pilot Custom 823 I got. This might be a touch darker, but some nice detail here on the cap. I like this uh, the cracked ice type of appeal that it's got going on. We got the white end pieces here that holds on with the clip. You got the Opus 88 on the clip there, nice and and wide and, and uh, plump. Let's just say it goes, it's in proportion, like it's a big clip, but it's in proportion to the pen. So that looks nice. Uh, on the back, we got the same color scheme that goes with it. This is a knob to control um, it looks like you're, oh, this is a vac filler. No, it's the eyedropper, but it's got, this is like a shut off valve, like a plunger to close off the ink chamber from the rest of the world because it can hold a lot of ink to do a lot of damage, right? So, um, but yeah, I like just the overall look, the fitment. Um, it is three turns to uncap one, two, three. So it let, you know, it's not the end of the world. I do prefer a few less turns, but I ordered mine with the 1.5 millimeter stub and going with my theme, I ordered an extra fine as well. I always talk about one pen, many nibs. So I ordered an extra one since I was doing it. And uh, there is also an extra nib that fits this, but it's not from Opus. This is a bit of a uh, hack that I'm going to show you. you got to stick to the end. I'm going to show you that as well. And I'll do a writing sample for both nib widths. But all in all, like the construction's really nice. They're going to give you some dimension, size comparisons, all that good stuff. But I've been using the pen here for about a week here or so, close to that anyways. And I just, I'm loving it. I like the size of it. It, it still fits in my favorite pen case. Okay, so that's a big one for me. Um, you can't get too much bigger and still it's just poking out the top but it still does just just fit in there but um that's i don't use i find if i if i have a pen that's too big to fit in the case i just don't use it as much as i should so that's a big one for me let's roll you through it comes apart really easily one thing i do recommend when i first got the pen uh the cap was okay but these threads were, you know, they're pretty tight. I just washed the pen out here before the review, but they were super tight, really squeaky. I almost felt like, especially if you take out the nib unit, felt I had to turn harder than I would have wanted to. So I definitely recommend putting a little grease on here. Let me find mine. So if you needed another reason to buy yourself a Twisby, this would be it alone. Just having the grease around is really handy. So I went around and greased everything on the pen uh, when I first took it apart, I thought this this is just too tight. So on the threads here, on the nib unit, um, these gaskets too, there's just a lot of friction with th the threads. And then you add the gasket on there, it would just like almost squeak when you would do it. It was just quite tight, very, very tight. Whoops, lost the pen there. So um, also on here, I, I would pull the plunger out. It's way nicer now. I probably don't even need to regrease it. But when I first got it, it was super tight. And I can imagine, I don't know, it was just, this is pretty flexible, right? So if you're pushing too hard, I just wouldn't want something to happen. But I just put a little dab on all these threads and all these moving parts, anything that's coming in contact uh, with these gaskets, even on the very, very outer edge here of this unit. You don't want to get it into the feed, but just on the edge because there is a gasket. Where is it? Uh, at the bottom of the section here, if you can see it's right on the bottom. So just, just those surfaces were just really getting a lot of friction in them when you snug everything down. And I thought things were just a bit too tight. But other than that, 
uh, this pen has performed extremely well, absolutely flawless, haven't had any issues. I'm going to do a writing sample for you, and uh, just before that we'll do some size comparisons. But my impressions with the pen, this thing is really great, really well made, and for the price points you can get, even regular price it's good, but you get it on sale, and uh, it's a skookum deal. Here we are next to a Twisby Eco Visconti Homo Sapien and a Mont Blanc 149. So pretty big pen, a little bit uh, longer and girthier than both of those. Not as big as the Kiwi Pens Jumbo ACR or the uh, Ranga Model 9 there, but pretty significant size. I like the length of it, the uh, thickness there. It is a little bit thicker than the uh, Ranga Model 9. And let's just show you a couple of brown pens so you can check out the color. Memory did not serve me very well. <laughs> I, uh, I hadn't used my A23 for a bit, but yeah, the uh, the brownie amber color on the A23. This has ink in it, so that's a lot darker, but you can see through here. The uh, A23 is significantly darker than the amber color, and there's a Diplomat with the brown anodized finish. So I like a good size pen, and here it is next to some of my favorites, the Homo Sapien and the Mont Blanc 149. So, yeah, I don't post either one of those pens when I write with them normally, nor do I with this Opus as well. So it's quite comfortable, sits in my hand, really enjoy the pen. I don't think my hand's going to ever develop a cramp using this one because I'm having to grip too hard. Let's chuck it on the scale. I thought I'd weigh it, and then we can also check it uh, when I fill it up too to know how much ink it holds. So let's just call it uh, 34 grams. So not overly heavy. I think the Mont Blanc 149 is in that range, maybe a touch lighter or... Yeah, there we go. Let's call it 31 and a half. So uh, similar type of weighting. So that was what, 34? What are we in the cap? We're about what, 16 there. So that would put about 18 or so in the pen body. So good weight. Let's uh, ink this up. I'll show you how you do it. And then we will come back and weigh it and see where we're going. Let's walk you through how you ink this up. You just simply, of course, unscrew, pop off the section, and this is where it's a little daring doing this on camera. It's easier if you're doing it yourself. You uh, get out your eyedropper, and today it's a special ink, a little homebrew. I'm going to tell you about it in the writing sample. And, uh, okay, so here we go. Put the lid over there. You're going to fill up your eyedropper. Okay, pull that back. And you're going to put some ink into the pen, and uh, let's just... Wait a second. Let me do some glam shots first. All right, those are out of the way. I thought I should do that before things get messy. Then you just simply go in here. I would tap the camera to make this focus, but I can't do that as I'm dealing with ink. Let me tap it now, because there we go. This camera, oh my God. All I do is complain about it in every video. Here we go. So I'm trying to watch off camera here. I'll call that good enough for the context of doing this video. Obviously you want to leave yourself a little bit of space because you got to thread this in there. We'll tighten it down. Okay, we're good. Nothing went flying everywhere. I'm just going to wash this stuff up first and we'll come back, weigh it, and see what we're tipping the scales at. Moment of truth, here we go. We were 33.9 or 34 grams before. Where are we at? <laughs> 37 on the button makes the math easy. So 3 or 3.1 grams if you want to be a little more accurate. So we're just going to assume that the density of the ink is the same as water. So D equals M over V. So M equals V. So three milliliters of ink this puppy holds. All inked up and ready to go. Let's see how this puppy writes. This is the Opus 88. This is the Omar. And the color on this one, this is the uh, amber. And so this is the 1.5 millimeter stub. The ink I'm using, so I don't know how the camera picks that up at all. If we can focus, gosh. Okay, so there we go, a little bit better now. Um, this is a homebrew. Now, I didn't get the idea. I got to give credit where credit is due, but this is a mix of uh, Diamine Sherwood Green and also Diamine Majestic Blue. So every now and then I go on uh, 
on Reddit, and there's this one user on there, uh, Hiroshizuku dash con dash pecky. That's where I got it from. I said I'd give them a quick mention, but I was just trolling through the pictures on there and saw this ink they did, and uh, it was sort of like a home version of the Lamy Petrol. So having a little fun there with the inks, and uh, it's, yeah, it's sort of got that vibe. I don't own the Petrol, but I've seen pictures of it, so it sort of has that color, a little bit of sheen. Looks kind of cool. So it was just 50-50, one-to-one ratio. So with this uh, large stub, it, to me it feels like it'd be really good for writing uh, like headings or something like that. So I'm going to do a quote. We're going to do a, a, a chapter title of a book. So it does a great job of uh, nice kind of bold printing and also too if you want to do cursive I'll just do a real quick one here. Uh, it gives a nice line variation as well. So I'm going to swap this out, go with the extra fine and we'll have a little contrast. I'll do a sample over here and I can come back, we'll compare the two. I got the extra fine nib in there ready for action. Let's give this a go. As to be expected, the extra fine is much finer than a 1.5 millimeter stub, but it writes like a normal extra fine nib would. The uh, wetness and flow is appropriate. Um, you know, line variation doesn't exist, but it gets you nice, fine, tight printing and writing on there as well. You can see close up here, just the absolute difference. But uh, yeah, I'm kind of liking this ink combo. Looks pretty cool, but not to end it there, I got a little secret sauce for you today. Apparently, okay, now I heard about this. I'll give credit again where credit is due to Eileen Goldenberg. You can find her on a little bit of YouTube, but mostly Instagram. Uh, she also did a top three pens uh, for Apple Boom, and I saw her top three pens, and she said you can just yoink the nib and feed unit from a Pilot Parallel and pop that sucker into the Omar, and uh, away you go. You got uh, massive ink capacity and you can write with one of these guys. So I haven't tried this. Thought I would keep this secret for you and I right live here on the video. And uh, let's give this a go. All right. So I'm just going to twist this guy out a little bit of tissue there to save my fingers getting too dirty. And, you know, it's not a screw type. He just apparently just, oh, that's a good fit. Yeah, I could see that nice and snug it's actually more snug than in here yeah i don't think that's going to leak <laughs> wow so i'm just going to let this prime up you can sort of see in the section there how it does that so i'm just going to give it a moment open this up a little bit just really promote some ink flow and uh, let's give this a go check this thing out it lays down some serious inkage so this is a uh, uh, let's go this way try a different little line variation here but this is the 2.4 millimeter I have no idea how to write with these things. And you can see it's just gargantuan. I could see this for art and stuff if you got to fill a lot of spaces as well. Because, you know, for regular printing and, and whatnot, uh, if you're good at like a gothic type script and stuff like that, this would be really cool. Yeah, and just it is crazy. I'm not the best at, uh, or not even good at all, I should say, for knowing how to use a Pilot Parallel, but there you go. It lays down some seriously wide strokes, tons of ink. You can see what's going on with the shading. That's a weird kind of shading going on there. You get a little bit of sheen at the right spot, but it's mega saturated. And of course, for regular printing, you're not going to use it. So in a skilled hand, that little Pilot Parallel nib that would look pretty cool. And I uh, I popped it out, checked the fins for damage, no issues whatsoever. So it was a nice, nice, you know, friction fit. So, hey, we've got a few thank yous to do. Thank you to uh, Eileen Goldenberg for mentioning that tip on your top three pens and sharing that with everyone. That worked out well. Also, thank you to uh, the user there on Reddit, Hiroshi Zuku Kompeki, for the homegrown sort of Lamy Petrol looking type ink. I think that looks pretty neat. Uh, so my thoughts on the pen, as you, you can kind of catch the drift, I think this pen's pretty sweet. Nothing really wrong with it that I could 
poke holes at it. Maybe the only one would be uh, a few few less turns there on the cap. I'm sort of a two and under type of guy. One is ideal, right? But, uh, you know, so other than that, if I got to pick one thing, I think that would be about it. But I like the size, the ink capacity, the filling system. I'm always terrified of eyedropper pens, but the shutoff valve, that sort of gives me a little more solace than using one of these suckers. So anyways, thank you to, for uh, watching as well. Comments, likes, subscribes are always welcome. I'm trying to hit the year, finish off 2021 at 4,000 subs. So if you can hit it, that would be cool. But we'll quit it for now and we'll catch you next time.